Hi, my name is Matt Forrest, and today we're going to take a look at how to create a telco propagation or RAN planning model in Cardo. This end-to-end -end demo will cover how to use a variety of data sources to find the most suitable location for a tower, adding and modeling a new tower, and then enriching that new tower location with additional data such as population or demographics with no additional steps. What does this mean for you? You can find new locations using a visual map interface or use machine learning and spatial modeling to find where the best location should be. We'll show you how to model new tower locations faster using Workflows, our visual modeling toolkit to find a single tower location or to find multiple towers. Finally, we'll show you how you can see additional data points once you've added a new tower with our data observatory and no extra steps, including population, income, customer profitability, competitor towers, retail locations, human mobility, traffic. You can also see current tower locations and how they overlap with the new towers, which can inform CapEx decision-making in the future. In short, you can model the entire process end-to-end -end in one location faster and with more confidence. To begin, we can take a look at our study area, in this case, an area in South Minneapolis. As we can see, we have already modeled some new 5G tower location. Let's take a look and try to find a new suitable location for a new tower. As you can see here on the left, we have additional data layers for tree cover, as well as elevation. These two data sets are pulled and created from data sets from the state and county. Card also provides elevation data and land cover data through our data observatory, or you can bring your own. Since this is a residential area, building distortion is not as much of a concern, but they could easily be added as a layer as well. Here you can also see a complete suitability index. The elevation and population layers are added to different demographics, such as total population, median income, as well as customer, home locations, and customer lifetime value scores. All this data is blended together in a single index that allows us to find the best location for a new tower. Let's take a look at this area here to see if we can find any commercial buildings that might be a good location for a new tower. Once we've picked a location, we can get the latitude and longitude by clicking on the cell and then moving over to our workflows interface. Once we enter the coordinates, all we have to do is hit run and workflows will model our new location. In this workflow, we are assuming a 50 foot high tower and three gigahertz tower strength. It uses the NYU propagation model in a suburban setting and accounts for line of sight and non line of sight scenario. Now you may have noticed that there's no raster data being used within our modeling. Up until now, almost all propagation modeling tools relied on raster data and also output raster data once the model is complete. This is because almost all elevation and tree cover layers are derived from raster data. However, to use this data, you need specialized tools and only those with access to those tools can analyze or see the results, not to mention the challenge of integrating this data with vector data like population or other data sets that we have mentioned earlier. This greatly limits the ability of others in your organization to access and see the coverage results, costing your organization time and money to answer a simple question like how many people will be covered by this new tower. At Cardo, we use a more modern approach with spatial indexes or a global grid system that has embedded spatial properties such as neighbors or paths. These are highly performant and when data such as elevation, tree cover, or population are interpolated to these grids, you can perform all of this analysis using the same spatial support system. You can read all about this in the performance and cost benefits for your data stack in the Spatial Indexes 101 report, link in the description. Now that our analysis is run, we can head back to the MMAP interface and refresh our layer. And here we can see our new tower location, which has already been added to the map. And automatically with no extra work, we can already see the additional data that's been added to this location, such as population, median income, and customer score. Better yet, as our data changes, this will be joined automatically and updated with no extra work. And better yet, this map can be shared easily with anyone within your team. Just open the sharing options and set it to the, pr the protection that you want. And with a few simple steps, you can generate a coverage map with this data or data from your entire network. This new process all takes place with your data warehouse of choice, meaning that your data and all the data required for this process are securely stored within your current data architecture in all major clouds and data warehouses. And that's it, we hope you enjoyed this video. To get in touch to learn more, simply head over to cardo.com, scroll all the way to the bottom to request a live demo of this and other solutions for the telecommunications industry. Thanks for watching and we hope you have a great day.